people gathered in downtown Niagara Falls for a storyboard unveiling that commemorates the history of the railroad here in the Honeymoon City. The idea came to us actually from Sherman Zavitz, the city historian, and it was brought to the city's public art advisory task force. So that's a group of volunteer citizens that work together to work on projects like this, historical plaques and storyboards and pieces of public art. And how long did it take you to actually choose the photographs and have this whole thing come to fruition? I'd say we've been working on it for almost a year from the idea um, to being able to secure funds and then to work with all the appropriate people to create the text and to uh, get the, the appropriate photos. So how important was the railways in uh, getting Niagara Falls established? Oh, very important, especially from the mid-1800s, say, up to the mid-1900s. Uh, we had a lot of manufacturing industries that uh, settled here in Niagara Falls, and that was due, at least in part, to the fact that we had such a great railway system. The transportation was excellent. We had a long-distance American line that came through here, and, of course, we also had Canadian National, which served uh, Canada from coast to coast, as it still does. Today's ceremony was our first chance to ask Sherman about stepping back from his role as the city's official historian. Well, the role has meant a lot to me. It's been a great honor to have served as the official historian for Niagara Falls for the past quarter century. And uh, I've enjoyed it. I've always had a great love of history and uh, especially the history of this fabulous community of Niagara Falls. So it's been a great honor to talk about it and to write about it over the years. The way he tells a story, you feel like you're there with him. And I think an individual like him who has a passion for history and has a keen interest in getting it right, when he tells a story, it's more engaging, it makes people more aware, makes them more interested in history and the culture and all of the background on how we got to be here today. So, I, I mean, we're gonna miss him. I wish there was a way we could keep him, but he's been a terrific ambassador for the city of Niagara Falls. I'm so proud to call him a friend. And, and I hope that the next person stepping up realizes it's going to be a big pair of shoes uh, to fill. The plaque is a reminder of the past, but Mayor Jim Diodati tells us there's a future for railway travel here in the city. And I think it's kind of beautiful that we've gone full cir circle. We've done a 360 and we're back to trains again and back to excited about the arrival of the GO train because there are too many automobiles on the highways and there's too much unpredictability with construction and congestion and, and everything else that challenges you when you drive. The trains, there's no, there's no uh, traffic jams on train tracks. So we're as excited as they were 150 years ago to have trains back in the city. As a matter of fact, so much so that Mayor Deister, Niagara Falls, New York, declared they want the GO trains to come to Niagara Falls, New York, because they appreciate that the GTA is the fastest growing, hottest uh, metropolitan uh, area in all of North America. And they want to plug in in the same way that we want to plug in, like an umbilical cord, into the GTA, it just lights up Niagara, so I'm excited about it. In Niagara Falls, reporting for The Source, I'm Lori Taraba.